You don't think Maury would do no that? No way. If no? Daryl moves him, he's Why getting not? a star. He, Why not? Because he's getting a star. Yeah, but Harden is 34 next year, it, and he has one year left in his deal, and he's on the decline. If you're Philly, the interesting thing to me, Kev, is going to be, is Daryl going to play hardball on this Harden thing? The same way that he did on the Ben Simmons thing, where it's like, I don't have to trade him. He opted in. I don't have to trade him. I know that's his guy. I know he hugs him off the plane every time he gets him. But I don't have to move him. And so if you're not going to give me a great return for him, then I'm not moving him. And I'll deal with the disgruntled star. I don't know, man. This gets so fascinating. I mean, we saw Daryl Morey's game plan with Ben Simmons. He dragged it up until, you know, after the new year. Right. Uh, January, February, and then they finally make the Ben Simmons for James Harden deal. It's a it's a huge win for Philadelphia to land Harden and you know, Maury, you know, ended up being on the right side of, you know, that debate of wait or take take a deal now for like a CJ McCollum esque player. And and with Harden at this point, I wonder how aggressive are these teams gonna actually be? What what is Daryl actually looking for? There was, you know, Brian Windhorst said er, uh, earlier on Thursday on ESPN how, you know, Philadelphia, maybe now Kyrie Irving would want to take a look there if Harden's going to go, as you said earlier. Will they take a look at Damian Lillard? But does the Philadelphia even have enough for Dame? We're talking about Miami not having enough. Uh, we're talking about Portland wanting to drag things into the season and give it time with Dame or even just keep him and build a, a two timelines winner. Philadelphia, they have Maxi. They can trade one future first. What are they really going to get back for Harden? Are they going to compile enough assets to make a strong Dame offer? I don't think that was necessarily because even from the Blazers' perspective, you got Scoot Henderson, you got Anthony Simons, you got Shaden Sharp. I love Tyrese Maxey in a vacuum. I'm not sure I love him as much for what the the Portland Trail Blazers have. So I think for them, I still think they would want to wait. And so that means for Philadelphia, if you're not getting, you know star quality talent back in return is it a collection of role players something like from the clippers you know you can get terrence Mann back a good guy who you know moving without the ball he's never really Ty Lue hasn't earned you know fully trusted him with a 30 plus minute per game is it someone like him with norm powell and robert covington is it a no way of players with one future no first? way you don't think maury would do no that no way if no? daryl moves him he's Why getting not? a star he, Why not? Because he's getting a star. Yeah, but Harden is 34 next year, it, and he has one year left in his deal, and he's on the decline. I understand. Are you sure he's getting a star? Are you really sure? Yes. He will get know, a man. star in return. What does He'll star a, mean? Like, what, what type of star are we talking about here? Would you give up, if you're the Clippers, would you give up Kawhi or George? No. Neither. No. I I wouldn't be willing. I I'd play hardball if I'm the Clippers and say you can have Terrence Mann, Norm Powell, Robert Covington in a future first, and you can go home and be happy with it. That's what I'd I tell Daryl. That doesn't maximize Embiid. Well, what if what if Tyrese Maxey takes a leap this coming season with? Harden not there, dominating the ball. What if Nick Nurse? See, my vision for the Sixers personally is that they in- integrate more motion. We talked about this after Nick Nurse was hired. I think they need to take a little bit of what the Bucks do with Giannis and a little bit of what the Nuggets do with Jokic and empower and beat in that type of offense, and that requires the right personnel. Maxi is 100% the right personnel. That guy is awesome off ball. He knows how to move. He has feel. He knows how to cut. He does all those you know high IQ and tangible things on the floor. So Terrence Mann can do that. If you get another pick, maybe you can package those together in another type of deal. I don't know, man. I, I like. I think if you do, if you do trade Harden for a, a group of players rather than an ind- individual star, to me that says you feel a high level of confidence that Tyrese Maxey is ready to be the second guy behind Joel Embiid, and then it's about having a bunch of really good role players, a, a team that's eight, nine man deep. You know, I, I, th- I think that might be what they have no choice to do, because I don't think they're going to get a star back for James Harden um, unless there's a surprise around the corner here. You know, maybe it's a maybe it's something like uh, of someone we're not expecting a Carl Towns type. I'm not saying they should do that or would do that. 
I'm just saying somebody that we're not anticipating. We anticipate Paul George. We anticipate a Kawhi Leonard, but maybe it's somebody we're not thinking about. Well, because the other teams that are mentioned, you don't know. What about the Knicks? Why is that name out there? In terms of assets, who would you want? And I don't like Harden with Brunson. I love Brunson. No, I hate the Knicks fit. And I, if I'm I don't Knicks, like that. No, Why are they I hate, interested? I really hate the Knicks fit. I, I, yeah. I would not. I would not not even be in for Harden if I'm the Knicks, unless it's to like it's fake interest to drive the price up. Yeah, you know, maybe something so. like that. But uh, but then you're helping Philadelphia in, in that regard too if you do that. Um, so I mean Miami, I get it. Uh, Miami, I definitely get it. You bring him in with Bam Adebayo and Jimmy Butler. Harden has, you know, he doesn't need to lead. He doesn't well, need let me to say be a this. voice. The reason, let me, let me just, just hear me out on this thing. So Paul George has not been available. That's been the problem with the, the Clippers. Not, neither of those two stars have been available in tandem nearly at all. Uh, Kawhi less than George. But George has got his own issues where you wouldn't necessarily, you say that like, hey, you can't get a guy like that. But I mean, he doesn't play. Enough, <laughs> and he's not healthy when it comes time. I mean, you know, he's when he got to the, when they got to the playoffs last year. It, I, I can I can pitch about Harden only getting you four field goals or less in some of those games, but Paul George gets you zero field goals. So <laughs> I don't know. And to me, I kind of think that. James Harden is best when the whole thing like revolves around him. And so I could talk myself into, again, you know my feelings on him. But if I'm the Clippers, I could talk myself into like, hey, here's a guy that could like, he could, we could be, be Harden centric when Kawhi plays. And so we could still have a pretty good team. When Kawhi and and maybe an awesome team when Kawhi plays, but then when he doesn't, because we know we're only getting him for so many. That's a guy that could carry the load, assuming you think he can. Assuming you know, much like Game One against Boston, where we saw it, we saw Harden with the ball in his hands, four out, best player on the team, and he looked like Houston James Harden. And it's like, man, you might be able to play that way for a lot of the time because Kawhi Leonard's not going to be around. I don't know if Ty Lue necessarily wants to do that, but I, I mean, he has been more durable. And where are you going from here if you're the Clippers? I don't know. You might, I, you might consider it. Again, I'm not in love with the guy. I wouldn't want to trade for him, but. I understand, and I do think, I don't think Daryl's going to move him for role players. No way. I, I mean, uh, you could trade him for Ben Simmons. <laughs> Get him, run it back. Hell, they won as much with Ben Simmons as they did with James Harden. The Harden era in Philly has been a colossal disappointment when you consider it. Uh, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's too it is. bad. Because I mean, Harden... now you're looking and you're like finding a trade for him. And yeah. it's a worst asset. I, I mean, um, here, here's the thing, though, Chris. I mean, like, you know, I've been a Harden guy for as long as we've been doing this show. As long as we've been doing it. But I don't think for Joel Embiid, Harden is for his best. And so this is a situation for Philadelphia where this could be a blessing in disguise for Joel Embiid and for the future of the Sixers if they can get the right return and build the right system that truly, I mean, I know the guy just won MVP, but takes him to an even higher level in a postseason setting. That's the key here. I mean, Embiid is a magnificent regular season player. He's had some outstanding moments in the postseason, but, you know, we just watched Jokic get better in the playoffs. Joel Embiid has never gotten better in the postseason. So either that uh, says a lot about him or it says a lot about the system. It's a little bit of both. To me, I think I lean towards more system. And and that's why I want to see the personnel change. I want to see the system change. And that's where the opportunity is here with trading James Harden for whatever it is, whether it's a star or whether it's parts and integrating a new system under Nick Nurse. But the, the downside is 
is that you don't get something that makes you better. And this is that this is just another mistake in a long line, a long history of mistakes going back to taking faults over Tatum. Everything that they've done over the years, giving the money to Al Horford, Joel Embiid has become an MVP despite mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake by the Sixers. And this could be the beginning of the end if Daryl Morey doesn't get the right return and if Nick Nurse doesn't build the right system. So we're at, at really at a big crossroads here uh, in, you know, really in NBA history, right? Because this is an MVP we're talking about who's been with the Sixers his entire career, one of the longest tenured players in basketball, like we talked about on Tuesday. I hope they get it right. I love seeing Embiid in Philadelphia, but um, I'm not super optimistic about it. Yeah.